Hi guys and welcome to this video in which I want to compare the 2016 9.7 inch iPad Pro with the brand new 2020 release of the iPad Pro and this version is the 11 inch version. So I have been using the 9.7 2016 version for four years since it came out in March 2016 and has been my uh, absolute go-to for so many things and um, to be honest I haven't felt the need to upgrade it over the last few years however I have thought it's been a four-year gap and recently I have been eyeing up the thought of getting a new iPad so I waited to see what this year would hold and so I've decided to take the plunge and go for the 2020 model of the iPad Pro. So I just wanted to do a quick video today to show you a comparison between the two uh, which hopefully will help in terms of if it's something you are currently looking at doing yourself. And you'll see my nice uh, Blue Peter style job of how I'm going to demonstrate this. Here we go. So the first thing first is the actual size and the screen of the iPad. So what you'll notice here is that there's actually not a lot of physical difference in the true size here. Yes, the 11 inch is obviously slightly longer and a tiny bit wider, but actually when you hold it, it doesn't actually feel much bigger. Obviously the difference you'll see here is actually in the screen size where the bezels on this one are much smaller compared to the 9.7. And that gives the actual screen estate, um, the overall size and it's much, much bigger for you. Now what was great about the 9.7 inch from four years ago and the reason I think it stood instead um, in in the time basically is because for its for for the model it was so well specced out at the time that actually i think apple have really struggled to improve upon it now when you consider that at the time the screen here for example was laminated it had a true tone display it had a p3 color gamut and it was 500 nits brightness and even now it still is a really great looking screen on the 2020 version, and this is also on the 2018 version, I believe, some of the differences are it's a ProMotion display, it's 120 hertz, so you really notice the difference when you're scrolling. It doesn't pick it up very well on the video, um, but when you actually have it in your hand, it's so smooth, and the transitions from screen to screen are, 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 are much better, uh, particularly on web pages when you're scrolling through. It's also laminated. It is brighter. It is 600 nits brightness compared to 500 nits on the 2016 um, iPad Pro. And it also has P3 color gamut and it's also true tone. So some real sort of similarities there. Now, one of the differences is actually on this one is that it feels quite different to write if you have the Apple Pencil. Um, I believe that there is a slightly different lamination process on this screen and actually the pencil itself has a slightly grippier feel compared to the 9.7. So the Apple Pencil 1 and the 9.7, it had much more of a glide kind of feel across the screen. It often felt like you were writing on a piece of glass. Whereas actually the pencil from the, the second pencil and then on this one, don't want to move the iPad too much, um, it actually has much more of a grip to it. So it's just ever so slightly more of a tactile feel on the end compared to the uh, the first Apple Pencil. Uh, and one thing you'll see there is it's magnetic. So the new Apple Pencil actually um, magnetizes to the side of the iPad and actually keeps it charged. Again, that's no different from the 2018 version, but I don't have that version. So to me, it is an upgrade and it is something new. Okay. So then moving on to the sound of the iPads themselves. So here on paper, there's not really that much difference. What was great about the iPad Pro from four years ago was that it introduced the four speaker audio, which is still in place on here. And this is one of the key differentiators between the Pro range of iPads and any other range of iPads. Um, even in recent years, when they reintroduced the iPad Air, they still only have two speakers. And that was one of the reasons why I haven't changed my iPad Pro just yet because even though the Air may have better specs compared to the uh, Pro from 2016, the four speaker audio for me is absolutely pivotal. Bear in mind, I take this with me everywhere I go, use it for movies, use it for music, if I'm staying in hotels. Um, and so the four speaker audio is really, really important. One of the things to know is that the sound on this is still great. Um, 
However, I'm absolutely blown away by the sound on the new iPad. The volume is so loud. Um, the bass is for a tiny tablet, for a really thin device, the base that this can produce is really quite astounding. Um, and I think it has better stereo separation. So whilst in the specs, it doesn't sort of really give many details in terms of the difference. When you hear it and when you play them side by side, you absolutely notice the difference. I'm not going to do a sound test as it doesn't pick it up very well on a video, but I can assure you that the, that the speakers and the sound that they've put into this one is absolutely phenomenal. So a real sort of thumbs up there from me. Okay, so let's look at the overall specs and I've just pulled out some of the, the top line specs for me that I think are worth comparing. So first of all is the, the chipset on this. So the new one has the A12Z uh, and it also includes a neural engine, whereas on the 2016 was an A9X. So whilst this has started to show its age a little bit, it is a four year old chip, it's still pretty snappy and it still gets the job done on most things. I have noticed that web pages are slightly slower now to open, same as YouTube videos, but it's still no slouch. It really, really isn't. Um, what you just notice now, we'll see if jumping from an A9 to an A12Z, is that the speed bump is quite phenomenal. Um, everything opens at lightning speed on this. Um, everything is super snappy, um, super crisp in how it delivers uh, what comes on the screen. So uh, yeah, you really sort of notice the difference. Uh, in terms of overall size, so this is a 128 model, this is a 256 gigabyte model, but you can now get these up to one terabyte, uh, whereas on the original 9.7, the top size was 256. Cameras, I don't really use iPads to uh, take photos with. Um, fine, if that's your thing, I personally don't do that. That's why you have phones in your pocket. But the camera has been improved as well. So this had a 12 megapixel wide camera on the back, and this has got a 12 megapixel wide, but also a 10 megapixel ultra wide as well. So that's quite cool. If your phone can't do ultra wide, then this new tablet can. Um, and just the photos just look a bit crisper and cleaner and just sort of generally I think that the sensor is slightly better on this compared to the 9.7 2016. Uh, touched on it already but the oh, the Apple Pencil is the version 2 versus the version 1. The version 1 obviously was a much more of a rounded design. Um, the clip I put on myself I just got from Amazon. Um, because it was a rounded design, it literally could just roll everywhere off tables. So a clip was always uh, essential for this. Um, and obviously you also used to charge it by plugging it into the lightning port on, on the bottom of the iPad. So a slightly novel way to charge and a bit weird. The new one now has a flat edge that actually magnetizes to the side of the iPad itself. And then the great thing about that is that it keeps it charged, which is absolutely perfect. This one also now comes with what's called a LiDAR scanner. So this really helps with all the augmented reality work that Apple are really pushing. I doubt it's something I'm going to use massively, but it's cool to know that that comes and people are saying it's been used in uh, space endeavors and all kinds of stuff like that. But um, yeah, not really that important to me. I'm sure I'll give you augmented reality stuff a little bit of a go. Then... One of the main differences between this one and this one is that this has a lightning port to charge. So with all the iPhones at the moment still having a lightning port, um, this has then moved to USB-C when it did in the 2018 version. So, but over the years, um, I've actually acquired more things now that use the USB-C and I'm kind of hoping that when they update their iPhones this year, they finally move to USB-C. Um, obviously it's much more universal and friendly compared to proprietary cables that Apple have. So this one also has like an upgraded Wi-Fi chip compared to this one. So what I've also noticed is that it's much more, uh, uh, it connects much better to Wi-Fi. It's much quicker. Download speeds are faster. Um, upload speeds are faster. So just generally it works at a much quicker pace compared to this one here. Uh, and then, of course, one of the other differences is that the security in this one was via a touch ID, via your fingerprint, whereas these ones now use face ID to unlock and uh, to actually... Um yeah, get to everything. So really good. Sometimes I notice that if it's flat on a table and I need to make some notes, I have to lean in slightly so it can pick up my face. Uh, absolutely fine if you're holding it and then you are looking directly at the iPad, then of course it will pick up your face. Um, I have to be honest, in terms of a note-taking device, in terms of unlocking the screen, the Touch ID is actually slightly better in terms of doing so. But let's just have a quick... Um, 
In comparison of the two, so you can see here, the, the, this is the older design. Um, obviously, it had a slightly more rounded sort of curvature to it there. Um, uh, whereas the the 2020 model, same as the 2018, uh, has much more of a, I think, gone back to this industrial design. So it's flatter on the sides and it feels much more like a kind of slate that's in your hand. And um, yeah, I mean, it's both super comfortable, both really, really nice to use. I don't have a massive preference in terms of the overall design. Um, they weigh roughly the same, so you're not going to notice a massive difference. I was wondering whether this one would be slightly heavier up it really in the hand it really doesn't feel that way at all let's just bring this one back and so let's just give a quick um so yeah i mean the thing is this was what i was saying with the a9 on this one you don't really feel like this was ever a slouch but this is so super quick on the new one here it really it really really is everything just kind of comes moves along an absolutely beautiful pace you'll see there for example when i went into spotlight it juddered a bit at the top there whereas you did that there and it was just super super instant um and uh yeah um so in future videos i'll actually be doing some speed tests on these but for now i just think it's um let's open it on this one as well here we go go back to that page so yeah so this is my really quick comparison and hopefully it's helpful for those that still have the 2016 and are maybe thinking about upgrading um i'm really glad I've, I've chosen to do so now i think this is a wonderful ipad and i hope to keep this for another four years same as i have with this one i don't think ipads need to be upgraded uh, upgraded <laughs> upgraded every year uh, for those that still have the 2016 and are maybe still thinking about having keeping hold of it absolutely i think this still has its place it's a great tablet this is probably the best ipad um that apple have ever made the 2016 version um and i think this has easily got another couple of years left in it there so if you're happy with this and you're still content then absolutely stick with this one and, and still go for it so i hope you found this video useful if you like this video please drop it a like please add a comment and if you want to see more content like this then please drop me a subscription and for now, I'll say over and out and thanks very much. Cheers.